life is a roller coaster. I love that analogy because just the other day, I was thinking back about this as well. Thinking about how sometimes whenever I try to plan a perfect day for myself with all the calendar blocks that I have and try to work through my day, sometimes there are just no way to hit that perfect schedule all the time and complete all the tasks that I want to do within the day. Be it because of changes in my schedule due to shifts in timing, or it could be some kind of circumstance that happens within the day, such as if, like say I lose any of my belongings, just like the other day I lost, I thought I lost a card of mine, and then it got me all flustered to think about what I have to do, call up certain people and try and rectify the situation. And when those kind of situation happens, to me at least, it takes me a little bit of time to get back to center myself. And although I have all these wellness practices, it's not as easy when it comes to certain situations that get me flustered or triggered, whereby I need to be present at that moment. I'm still a work in progress and hence why I feel this wellness practices are important because it has helped me in improving how I handle myself and how I react to certain situations, how I, instead of reacting, respond to certain situations. And it's always a constant journey for myself to observe these patterns of mine, these, these behavior patterns of mine, so that I can continue to lock down and see how I can improve for the future. And why life is like a roller coaster is because going deeper into the analogy, if you are experiencing the down part of the roller coaster, you have that in initial feeling of, say, anxiety or that rush of what's going to happen. Oh no. <laughs> and then as you go down, it's going to be like, why am I doing this? Because <laughs> it's going to be such a mix of emotions isn't it and then as you come to the end of the at the bottom of the roller coaster and then you start to come up it's gonna be like oh okay i could handle that i'm i'm proud of myself for braving through that and now i feel that adrenaline rush or that dopamine hit and maybe that sense of like maybe i can do it again <laughs> so just like going through my day there's going to be that potentiality of different circumstances and different emotions playing out through the day because it's not going to be perfect as how it might plan out to be. But thinking of it, even though I don't get to complete some of my tasks due to certain changes in my schedule, I think that's the beauty in life as well because if everything were to be planned out perfectly for myself on a day-to-day -day basis, imagine having a perfect schedule that I just work through the entire year for maybe I'll have the tendency of just living my life like a robot just going through all these things that I've planned out perfectly for myself. It's not allowing myself to explore the whole range of human emotions that we can feel and really living the life of excitement of or thrill of what's going to happen and creating that space for myself to be open to whatever I can receive on a day-to-day -day basis and appreciating those little things that may arise throughout the day. Because sometimes it all, all it takes is a shift in perspective on how we view certain circumstances or changes in our schedule. And then we sometimes realize that the outcomes of it at the end of these changes or circumstance that we manage to solve intermittently through the day that comes out all of a sudden. And maybe through these experiences of change, it may allow you to learn something new within the day, externally or internally. So the three things that I would take note to allow us to achieve that would be firstly to give yourself grace in the changes that might happen within the day, be it good news or bad news, and be accepting of it because you never know what might be the outcomes of it in the short term, medium term, or the long term. There's always something to learn from changes that may arise. The second thing would be to focus on what you can control. 
and rather not what you can't because if any situation has arised, you have the ability to do something about it. So work on those areas that you can do something about it and not distract yourself away from yourself because of the areas that you can't control. You are always in control of how you feel at the end of the day because any potential suffering that we give ourselves is usually starting with our mind. And all these limit limitations are all set by us at the end of the day. So think about how whenever this sit these situations arise, it can help you to work on that. And the third one I would say is to create space for flexibility and not always give yourself that expectation that everything has to be perfect and everything is going to be going the way it should be. Because when you create a space for flexibility, you have that mindset where if anything were to happen, I can respond and not react rashly or impulsively. And in a way, it gives yourself that opportunity to accept what happens and even find enjoyment in the changes in life. And once you start to see that shift, then you understand that, oh, okay, it's not so bad. I actually like to live life freely as much as I can. Just making that space for joy and excitement. So I hope this particular sharing has came in insightful for you to think about if you are someone who has always planned out a schedule and see yourself reacting to certain situation or changes that has set yourself back for the day, this might be something for you to consider in, in terms of applying the three steps that I shared to see how you can adjust the mindset and the approach of how you view your day. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And if you enjoyed this piece of content, feel free to like, share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.